Hey guys, it's Tanner Manson from Future Investing, and today I want to talk to you guys about the top three growth stocks that you can buy today on your Wealth Simple account. Now, all these stocks are going to have some things in common. First of all, they're all going to be Canadian or at least trade on the TSX. It's very important on Wealth Simple that we try to avoid those exchange fees, right? The 1% whenever we buy and the 1% whenever we sell. But if we buy Canadian and we keep it in the Canadian dollar, we don't have that and it's absolutely commission free. Now, just as a disclaimer, although I am actually actually a licensed financial security advisor as my full-time job. None of these stocks or topics that we talk about today are in any way my recommendation. This is merely my opinion, and you can choose to do what you wish with this information. Now, before we start the video, if you could, hit the like button on the video. It always helps out, and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I know some of you haven't. I, 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 can, I can literally see you. Hit that button, subscribe, see more content, hit the channel, check it out. We've been putting out videos consistently. Let's continue to grow this channel. It's been a blast. All right, let's jump right into it. I got to get started. Okay, for stock number one, we have Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP. Starting a new business back in the day was one of the hardest feats that you could have to go through. There were so many obstacles to go through and no one really to guide your path. And as long as humans are here to try to want to make their life better and take on old challenges that, that maybe people People haven't innovated on in a while, there will always be a need to help new businesses along their path to success. A company that can come in, look at the challenges that new businesses are facing, and try to solve those problems consistently one after another is always going to have a long future in this very competitive environment. And currently, Shopify is way out in the lead trying to take on all those challenges. Actually, fun fact, being the biggest company in Canada for doing so. And yes, of course they have competition in such a needed space, but no one is even close to being in the space that Shopify is in. And all those challenges that they are trying to take on are also revenue streams. We're talking about subscriptions to their overall website design, domain names, app sales, theme sales, payment processing fees, Shopify shipping, Shopify capital, where they're giving out loans and taking on interest for, for helping out new starting businesses, referral fees from partners, even their point of sale hardware which you know they're selling to all the retail stores to help them actually transact uh, sales within the business like restaurants or clothing stores something that's actually in person and they're actually pushing that hardware more than ever lately and this isn't like some pipe dream SPAC company that like is wanting to innovate on something but not actually doing it no they are actually coming out with real numbers and successfully staying profitable for example 47 percent compounded annual growth rate on monthly reoccurring revenues that is a crazy compounded annual growth rate but I will say a lot of that is coming from the latest quarters of 2020 where, you know, the, the Rona situation sort of happened. And so lots of people had lots of free time to create like side businesses and stuff that may not stick around. A lot of those businesses were just fun side projects and they might not stay. That being said, there was a 95% increase in their revenue from the second half of 2020 from the second half of 2019. I'm not trying to take away from the growth that Shopify has had. I mean, it, it's been insane. They are a true giant now. But let's just not try to forget that we are paying a 400 times multiple at this current time to buy a stock that maybe if it doesn't return 95% next year, which is very, very likely because people will get back to normal, busier lives, that, you know, you're, you're paying for an extra high multiple for a stock that might not be growing that fast. But in, in no way am I saying that less growth than 95% is, is not acceptable. I mean, it's there's so much margin of safety there in terms of how much growth they've been having. I know it will continue. With all that being said, though, Shopify is still very much in North America, not a lot of places around the world like completely. And so what they've been working on lately is sort of bringing in more languages into the company and trying to expand into multiple geographies. It's such an amazing idea to sort of do that, although it's very hard because then they have to bring on what, what, what I used to love about Shopify was their help center. You know, the, the amount of support that that company had gave you, there would be no way that I would choose any other company other than Shopify to bring my business because the help center was so well built. It's just great to see that Shopify is getting into some like new markets as they approach that mega cap sort of company size, right? So I definitely will have to make some standalone video for Shopify because it's been a company that I've been following for a very long time. And there's just way too much to unpack just on this one video. Yeah, just look out for that video because I'll have to make it soon. It's such an interesting stock and the amount of different revenue streams that they have is insane. But uh, subscribe if you want to see that whenever it comes out and uh, let's jump on to the next one. For the next stock that we're going to talk about, don't hate me, I know it's very similar, but uh, it's going to be Lightspeed POS. 
ticker symbol LSPD. Lightspeed POS works in a very niche payment style market that helps small and medium businesses get robust payment systems for their point of sale activity like restaurants, retail stores, even golfing locations. They ended their third quarter period with a customer base of about 115,000 that has practically gained completely organically. This is a company that a lot of people thought were gonna suffer because they are a point of sale, like in-person transactions company, that because of the pandemic and everything, that they thought that you know, they were going to have a very hard time because no one would be going in. But then they shifted their business very quickly to do the very similar thing like Shopify of having an omni-channel sort of payment system that allows you to do online retail, all that to go into one specific cloud-based system. Once they did that, the company had witnessed such accelerated growth and the stock had gone through the roof. The stock had completely shifted pace. Once they saw that they could, you know, change what they were doing and stop doing point of sale, well, not stopping, but you know, being able to do both online and point of sale. So then they could take advantage of this, you know, pandemic that we have today. The stock went from $19 at the bottom of March, upwards of $105 hitting their peak. But because of that little dip that we had uh, weeks prior, that it's down to about $86 a share as recording this video. Very similar to Shopify, you know, their system integrates with everything now. It's helping with the in-store sales, integrate with the e-commerce and the digital sales. It's also helping with delivery and pickup systems, as well as like financing and payment options for people that wanna do that online. It really, really helped a lot of businesses stay alive during this time because they didn't have those systems in place before. And for doing so, they were rewarded greatly for it. The company disclosed back in their fiscal Q3 of 2020 21, that they had reported sales of upwards of $57 million. That's up 79% year over year. It was way higher than what the company had said it was going to do, around $44 million to about $47 million. And actually, that's in US dollars. So whenever you're looking at the stock, you almost have to do the conversion. I know it's very confusing, but obviously that, that dollar is worth like... 25 to 30 percent more than ours so it, it, it is a lot with all that being said lightspeed is still not profitable because they are trying to grow at such an aggressive pace it's sort of fine that they're doing that because they are still such a new company they want to become a global leader in the sort of point of sale space and they have a strong balance sheet i mean just like shopify these SaaS companies just have a lot high high cash but yet low debt because their operating expenses aren't very high they have about 180 million dollars in net cash which is ample sizing for absolute like expansion if they ever needed to the, the capacity to expand and i mean uh, uh, of the money that they're making it's a very sticky customer base with about 91 percent of the revenue that they're bringing in is reoccurring once again i mean i don't really have the time to explain this company as well as i want to but it's a very similar company to shopify practically the same business but just at an earlier stage and it's a reason why you see this stock has grown so much and their multiple on their earnings are so much higher than what they're actually making is because people want a Shopify at their early stages. You know, they don't want to buy a Shopify now because they don't think it's going to grow as quickly. I don't think that's actually relevant. I think that could easily be a one or two trillion dollar company. It's not hindered by anything. But people are going to pay more for Lightspeed because they want an they want in on the early ground stages of a new Shopify competitor. And, and I think you have one here. And Shopify had proven that this SaaS business model is a successful one. And People know this, and that's why they're investing so aggressively into Lightspeed. But anyway, that's all I can talk about for this stock right now. But let's jump on to our number three, and maybe I'll make a standalone video for Lightspeed as well, if the Shopify one does well and everyone wants to see it as well. And for stock number three, we have Docebo, ticker symbol BCDO. And for the final company on our list, we are going to be talking about the one that is trying to tackle the e-learning problem that a lot of businesses are facing. Now, th this is quite a complicated business, but to put it as simply as I could put it, it's very similar to to Skillshare, where creators are trying to teach a skill or trade, except it's employers putting on videos for their employees to try to teach them how the sort of workspace or environment is, is conducted. Just like Shopify and Lightspeed POS, Docebo has multiple revenue streams, including a very strong customer retention rate and just a crazy amount of scalability in their SaaS product. The company ended their Q3 of 2020 with 2,025 different businesses that are continuing to pay them revenue 
revenue, as well as an annual reoccurring revenue of about $81 million. Around 94% of Docebo's sales are reoccurring. That is a crazy retention rate. That means that customers are loving their product and their ability to scale in this business is crazy. And the cash flows that they're going to bring in during all these market cycles is still going to be able to come in because businesses are not going to stop, you know, hiring and trying to train new staff. It's, it's not something that is that cyclical. It's going to be continuous regardless of what the markets are doing. And those reoccurring sales that we're talking about. So, so now the, the retention rate's about 94%, but the actual growth of that reoccurring revenue has a compounded annual growth rate of 54%. That's higher than Lightspeed and Shopify. That is an insane number. Even in Q4, they still forecast that that growth is going to stay high, around 48 to 52% for their next quarter of growth on top of what they're already doing, right? So let's add some things up. You're talking about insanely high retention rates, 94%. Compounded annual growth rates, some of the highest we've seen, 58%. And add in that it's a cloud-based software as a service, just like Shopify and Lightspeed. So they're going to have the same high cash, low debt type of design. And they're using everything that a stock market wants to see if you're going to be a leading growth company in the stock market. For example, they're leveraging AI to an extreme degree to bring in data-driven insights. So let's say, for example, one workspace continues to rewatch, lots of their employees continue to rewatch chapter two of one of their learning sessions. Well, the system is going to pick up on that, that maybe people aren't understanding this fully, or maybe it's, you know, the, the quality isn't that good or something along those lines. And it's going to flag it to the actual uh, employer to say, hey, maybe you guys need to tighten up your act on this one. They're not completely understanding this chapter. This really helps the business sort of understand what's wrong and where we can fix it. And then it also helps with the e-learners to be able to get a better product that they are suited to, you know, sort of achieve and overall it just helps the workspace process for you know the learning environment and helping their staff come into the workspace more prepared for the job that they're going to do. And over the years, Docebo has consistently changed the way that they do their business. You know, if new technology is the way to go, they have not shied away from adapting to the new ways that, we, that we're that we supposed to do business. Whenever they first started back in 2005, they weren't a cloud-based software. It was something that they would send to businesses that they could download. Now it's completely different. They are adjusting to the way things are being done. And the Rona situation was just the perfect timing of just hey, how can we relook at our business and, and sort of see what we're doing wrong? And Docebo is there with a perfect like sort of software that, you know, all the kinks have been taken out because they've been around for so long. And now companies are starting to pick up on who this company is and, and they're buying. I mean, their, their growth shows it. Anyway, that's all for Docebo. If you guys want, I'll also make a separate standalone video for that. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be fascinated to hear which one of these companies you guys think are, are the growth stock of 2021. There could still be more pain for growth stocks in the near future. I, I mean, even these multiples that I'm talking about on these great companies are still a little ridiculous. It's factoring in that these growth multiples are going to happen for the next 10 or 20 years when it might not. You know, there's always bumps in the road and new competitors to give companies like Shopify, Lightspeed, and Docebo a run for their money. But if you are buying these growth stocks for the long term and not worried about the short term trade, I do think that you have nothing to really fear. These are these are amazing companies. The growth is there to show it. The low debt, the high cash, the insane profitability, the margins, everything. But obviously, this is just one man's opinion. This is not a recommendation at all. These are just some companies that have stood out to me as I've watched the market from, you know, the last couple of years. I would especially put some more emphasis on Shopify. I mean, I know they're a lot bigger and everyone likes the small cap because they think they can grow to, to way bigger sizes. But even the size of Shopify for what they do is, is nothing. I mean, this could be like a one to two trillion dollar company if they continue their growth. There's nothing stopping them. Anyways, guys, before I go, as always, if you could hit the like button on the video it really, really helps out the channel. It's been going great lately. I'm going to continue to put out more videos. I, I guess, uh, you know, the Wealth Simple videos have been doing better than ever. And my Canadian audience is, is a lot bigger than my US one. Although, uh, you know, my, my American friends, I haven't forgot about you. I'm going to be putting out a lot of American companies soon. But until next time, guys, stay safe trading. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.